In this lesson, we will learn about positive indices in the law of indices. Now, let's say we are asked to simplify and express the following in terms of positive indices. 7 cubed multiplied by 7 squared. We learned previously that 7 cubed is actually 7 multiplied by 7 multiplied by 7. And 7 squared is simply 7 multiplied by 7. If we remove the brackets, it will look like this. And hence, what is the final answer after simplification? It will be, yes, 7 to the power of 5. Next, let's look at another example. We can rewrite 13 cubed in this way. By removing the brackets, we will have this. And hence, the final answer should be 13 to the power of, yes, to the power of 6. Now, let's look at another example. 5 to the power of 6 multiplied by 5. Can you guess what is the answer? We'll rewrite 5 to the power of 6 in this way. And the final answer is... Yes, 5 to the power of 7. Because we multiply 5 here 7 times. Looking at the previous examples, do you see any pattern? Now, let me give you a hint. Look at the powers and the answers. Looking at the previous example, we can write 5 as 5 to the power of 1. And hence, we can just simply add up the powers. And we will get 5 to the power of 7. Do you know what is this answer? Yes, by simply adding the powers, we will get 2 to the power of 34. Even a general terms like this, a to the power of m multiplied by a to the power of n. Do take notes that these two are the same bases. We can simply add up the powers. And hence, we will have our very first law of indices. Now, law of indices are actually just some way of manipulating the powers. Next, we'll look at another law of indices. For example, we have 9 to the power of 5 divided by 9 to the power of 2. We can rewrite it in this way. By cancelling out all the common terms at the numerator and the denominator, we will be left with 9 to the power of 3. Next, we have this example of 2 to the power of 7 divided by 2 to the power of 5. We can rewrite it as a fraction and we can cancel out all the common terms. And hence, we are left with, yes, 2 to the power of 2. Now, let's look at one last example. 5 to the power of 4 divided by 5. By rewriting it, we have this. And hence, our final answer will be, yes, 5 to the power of 3. Do you see any pattern in the previous examples? Very good. 5 to the power of 4 divided by 5. We can rewrite it as 5 to the power of 4 divided by 5 to the power of 1. And what do we do with the powers? Yes, we will simply subtract the powers and we will get 5 to the power of 3. Are you able to get the answer straight away? By subtracting the powers, we will have 3 to the power of 16. Therefore, in general, a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n. Do take note that in this case, we have the same basis again. And we can simplify it into a to the power of m minus n. And this will be our second law of indices. Now, this is just another way of writing a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n. Similarly, we can just simply subtract the powers. Next, we will look at yet another law of indices. Give an example, 6 squared to the power of 4. What do you think is the answer? Before that, let's rewrite 6 squared as 6 multiplied by 6. And since it's to the power of 4, we have to do it 4 times. 
Can you count the number of 6 here? And hence, the final answer should be 6 to the power of 8. Now, let's look at another example. 5 to the power of 4 cubed. By rewriting it, we have this. And what is the final answer? It will be 5 to the power of... Yes, you can count that there are actually 12 fives here. And the answer will be 5 to the power of 12. Let's look at one more example. 7 to the power of 9 to the power of 4. Instead of rewriting all the 7s, we have 7 to the power of 9 multiplied 4 times. And using our very first law of indices, we can rewrite it as 7 to the power of 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9. And we will have 7 to the power of 36. Do you see any pattern in terms of the powers? Instead of rewriting all the 7s, we can just simply multiply the powers. And hence, we will have 7 to the power of 36. In general, when we have a to the power of m to the power of n, we can simply multiply the powers. And this will be our third law of indices. We learned about the prefixes, and these are the prefixes that you have to memorize. Next, we learn about the three law of indices. Do take note that all these three laws of indices actually have the same basis. Now, let's check whether you have truly remembered the three laws of indices. Are the following true or false? Yes, it is actually false. Why? Because the operator here is addition. The first law of indices only works for multiplication. Is this true or false? It is false because 7 to the power of 8 divided by 7 to the power of 2, we will subtract the powers and the answer will be 7 to the power of 6. Is this true or false? It is false. We will not add up the power, instead we should multiply the powers. Is this true or false? There is no such law of indices and hence it is false. Is this true or false? Again, we should add up the powers instead of multiplying it and hence this is false. Do you get all of them correct? Even though laws of indices are very easy to remember and understand, it is very easy to make mistakes. Therefore, memorize the law of indices well. And that's all for this lesson. Let's move on to the next part of positive indices.